It's time for Side Scrollers from Screw Attack with your hosts, Stuttering Craig. Die, 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 die. <laughs> Chad. I'm not having any fun. The plot's gone all to hell. And any second now, the outro is probably going to come in and cut us off from whatever we're. And Professional Jerry. I hope your pretty little hands aren't tired, because you're going to make me a co hanger. And now. Broadcasting from the World Screw Attack Headquarters in Dallas, Texas, it's Five, The Side Scrollers. Oh, welcome back to Side Scrollers on ScrewAttack.com. What's going on, everybody? Hi. I'm Stuttering Craig. I'm Chad. And I'm Professional Jared. You're back. Welcome. Wow. Everybody. <laughs> to the most entertaining 30 to 45 minutes of your video game week, I am back from Hawaii, and I didn't get as tan as I wanted to. That was the Really? Goal. That was your goal? No, not really, actually, <laughs> no. But everyone's like, you do it. You know, they're expecting me to come back in a different shade, but I didn't. I came back as a uh, re jet black. regular old, yes. <laughs> it, yeah, I know, uh, I don't know, but uh, it was a good week. Good week, and uh, I had a uh, fun time. Uh, it was very refreshing, and I'm back and ready to go full force. The next eight weeks are going to be huge for us. Did you go zip lining? I it's did go zip lining. Upside down with your feet attached, wearing a Batman costume? Because that's how we pictured it. Yeah. No, actually, I did go <laughs> zip lining. Uh, sans the Batman outfit. Oh. Uh, I did go upside down, though. Really? Yes. Really? Yes, I did. Uh, the, the first time, first when you go down, you're like, and you're holding on to like for dear life. Oh, I'm sure uh, and after, yeah, oh yeah, man. And, <laughs> and, and I'm, I'm, I'm a scaredy cat when it comes to heights and stuff. Okay. So as you're going over this canyon, you're, you're holding up, you're like, <laughs> <laughs> and, and the second one, you're like, you, you kind of remove one hand, and then you kind of loosen the grasp, grasp on the third one a little just bit. Like, and then the fourth one, you're like, just let go. I'm a pro. Well, yeah. well, your arms are still there just in case something happens. You can get back there real quick. <laughs> and then, you know, by the time you're done, you're just like, <laughs> and, and you're just doing spinning, you know, you're doing cartwheels as you're going down in the air, which is impossible, but you can do it. All right. But, uh, yeah. They like hooked you in upside down? No, no, no. Or can no. you just like tilt? You, well, it's hooked in right here. Right. So as you're as you're going down, you can literally just lean back and just go totally, uh, totally weight, weightless, I guess, and just totally just rely on this piece of metal that is a, you're attached to this cable of all awesome. things. I just picture like yeah. going backwards and like doing this elaborate Spider-Man pose, like you know, no, upside they, down. Like, the uh, it's funny. <laughs> no, they did do that actually. Really? Yeah, yeah. They called there are several different poses, but the one where you're just all laying back, they call that the hangover. <laughs> uh, or like the next morning or something like that, where you're just like, Bleh. and there's a, there's a Spider-Man, there's the reverse Superman, where you're on your side. Yeah. And you're, but, All right. Yeah, yeah it was good. So times. how about the site? I want to go zip lining. <laughs> We're talking zip lining here. It's yeah. important stuff. Uh, good times. Know, it's interrupting our normal flow, though. Mm, true. Okay, so yeah, on the site this week. Now, here's the thing. is nothing but concise. Speaking of interrupting flow. Here is the thing. <laughs> we had a huge week of content this past week. Huge week of content. Your YouTube. All right, I'm talking to you, all you YouTube viewers, and you guys missed out on some of it. I don't know. I don't know. I was gonna say horribly awesome content. That's what I was gonna say. Because it, it was incredibly great. Uh, this past week. We had so much good stuff that I cannot believe other websites didn't pick this stuff up. Ridiculous. Um, we had the debut of a new uh, new show on Screw Attack, uh, Behind the Bites, which is really awesome. You're going to see episode two coming up later this week on Friday. Awesome. Um, we also had a video that I'm super proud of. I mentioned it on Side Scrollers uh, last time. Was uh, when we went down and saw Slash 000. Now, a lot of you guys don't know who that is. Uh, but he is the guy, you would know him as the guy who waited 14 years for Duke Nukem, or a, I guess a decade for Duke Nukem. He pre-ordered it back in 2000, and the game finally came out. We were there when he first uh, got the game, and we were there on his first impressions of the game, as well as some other things that popped up while we were at his apartment. Wicked cool. Um, you definitely need to stop what you're doing. Stop side schoolers right now. Go to ScrewAttack.com. Go watch that video. You can find the link in the description below. Really, really great video. And also, if you really want to feel really old, go along with the Duke stuff. We made a video about feeling old with the Duke stuff and all the stuff that's changed since Duke Nukem Forever was first announced in April of 1997. So you'd be surprised how much has actually changed in 14 years. So, yeah. uh, and how much has actually not changed. So uh, we also had uh, a couple of VGRs, lots of VGRs last week, reviews. Uh, Alice, Madness Returns, and uh, Blaze Blue, Continuum Shift 2. Which Brian played on the 3DS. We've been knocking out a lot of 3DS. Uh, That's because we've been lately. getting a yeah, bunch. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, yeah. I like that. I like that. We've been doing uh, stuff people haven't been doing. So, which is what we're known for. 
Anyways, so uh, yes, stop what you're doing right now. Go watch that content because it's all really, really good stuff and it deserves to be seen by a lot more people. And uh, man, send emails to like the uh, a lot of those news sites out there and get this stuff picked up. Uh, Kotaku and Destructoid Joystick, they need, it needs to be seen by lots of people. That, that Slash thing totally needs to be seen because uh, Man, that, that is a great, great video, and I think it's, it's like a decade in the, make, in the making. I think it's really, really great, so. All right, there you go. That's my um, shilling for our content. <laughs> All right. I think it's really, really good. I was really, really proud of last week's content. You guys did really great. Uh, okay. So uh, there's stuff coming up this week. It's all really good too, but I don't want to keep going <laughs> Continually. Yeah, All right. So, Let's be but, entertaining. Yeah, okay, speaking of entertainment, there's nothing more entertaining than news because it's not for my favorite segment. Your favorite segment, Brian. Chad's favorite segment. Everybody's in the fucking world favorite segment. It's time for Hard News. All the day's news from this past week. It's time for Hard News. The best introduction Thanks, ever. Thanks, I went a little crazy. All right. Speaking of going a little crazy, Jared? Yes. Go crazy. It's, it's, your, it's your time. All right. Okay. <laughs> First piece of news is uh, a lot of good news for PC gamers last week, starting off with early next week. Uh, City of Heroes and City of Villains was announced that it was going to go free to play later this year. Another game that became free to play was Valve's Team Fortress 2. Yay. So these games. Uh, City of Heroes eventually in Team Fortress 2 right now are now completely free to play and a lot of people are picking this up. And uh, I know you guys aren't really too big on like uh, most of the other like PC gaming scenes, Craig especially, but mm -hmm. like for these free games, if they're completely free, would you even be interested in actually like trying it or even yeah. picking it up? Because uh, I never really got into Team Fortress 2. I played it a lot over the, uh, over the weekend and for a free game, it's a hell of a deal. <laughs> like it, you know, it's free and it's a really <laughs> good game. Well. My question is, how does that work? At least, at least, I'm more interested in from that from the from like the publisher side. Do you need to watch an ad part of playing it, or is it just? Well, they have like in-game items that people can buy. Okay. Like if you want to get like new weapons or hats or stupid stuff like you that. You want to upgrade, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. It's, it's like the micromanagement. Yeah. Oh, they have like uh, people who already own the game will now have a premium service that allows them to actually like get rarer items or have more storage space and stuff like that. Okay. So, but they don't offer new weapons that are better than the other weapons, right? Not necessarily, no. Okay. That's good. No, I've been really interested to play Team Fortress 2 because I used to be a big PC gamer, you know, and uh, like especially uh, Counter Strike. Yeah. And, uh, I've been wanting to play Team Fortress 2. I literally never checked it out, but I've heard all these good things from so many people. And uh, so yeah, it's awesome to hear that it's free. I'll, ha I'll definitely be picking that up. You should. It's fun. So. It's, oh, yeah. it's on Steam. We'll play. Yeah, it's on Steam. I was playing with uh, Destin. He's not very good. <laughs> oh, talk shit. Then again, I Let's really see. can't. I can't talk too much because I just started playing it, so I really don't think I'm awesome either. I will destroy you. <laughs> uh, now what I do want to bring up is that people who already owned the game immediately started bitching about the fact that it went free. Mm -hmm. Not because, you know, thousands of new people are joining in on them and interrupting their gameplay, or not because they completely changed the format of what the game was before, but because they already spent money on it and now it's free for everyone else, they feel entitled to some sort of return. Right. Now, I can understand if you had just bought the game maybe a couple of weeks ago, then they can offer you a refund. That's a standard thing they do in retail. You know, if you buy a TV, and next week they have a sale on it for $1,000 less, bring in your receipt, they'll give you back $1,000. But the people who bought it years ago are the ones complaining about it, who've had years of free updates, constant updates, and all these extra goodies. Now they're complaining about it. Well, let me relate it for them. You buy a game on Xbox 360, PS3, whatever, for $60, yeah. and it's going to price drop. Some of those games are like 5 or $10 right now, yet you don't see anybody saying, I paid $60 for that, where's my $50 worth of shit? I'm tired of people thinking like they're entitled to stuff. I'm sorry, internet. You're not entitled to things, especially, especially when a game goes to $0. You bought something previously, you don't count anymore. You don't count, I'm sorry. They're trying to get a new audience in. They're trying to get a new audience in. You're the old audience, they want to support you, but you're not owed shit. Especially, I don't know, it drives me nuts. People are like, give me this, give me this. I, you owe me this, you owe me this. No! Well, a lot of people look at it like, oh, I paid, and now I paid for nothing because it's free now. What you did was you helped support a game that you genuinely liked. So you helped fund the company that made that game, which will then allow them to make more games that will entertain you. So don't feel like your money was wasted because it wasn't. Drives That's, me nuts. Yeah. It, it's just this, in, this sense of entitlement that everybody feels like they're owed nowadays. You know, it's, it's, 
Oh, really? I, I, you owe me this. You owe me this because I did this. Yep. No. It's like the people who sue for like everything. Drives me nuts. <laughs> Drives me fucking nuts. We'll move on. <laughs> <laughs> Next story. Uh, as announced at E3, the original Halo Combat Evolved is going to get a remake for the Xbox 360. Mm -hmm. Now it's going to have just a couple new features. One's going to have the online play, which is a big deal. It's going right. to have the shiny new graphics and the classic graphics modes. And we found out it's going to have support for the Kinect. What? So my question to you oh. is... <laughs> oh. Let me finish. I'm sorry. My question to you is, <clears throat> is this the worst idea ever or is this the worst idea ever? Um, mm. I'll choose A and B. Uh, it, it, it's, a, it's phenomenal. <laughs> Usually I would go with C because that's the most commonly uh, picked answer in multiple choice scantrons, oh. but uh, I would go with uh, both. <laughs> it could have been worse though. You're saying it just has the option to. Well, they said they haven't actually fully explained what the Kinect functionality is going to be, but by my understanding, it's not going to be part of the main game at all or multiplayer. I really don't know. They just said it's going to have some sort of Kinect thing. So okay. it could be mini games for no, all we know. Because the worst idea ever would be if they were like, oh yeah, we're releasing Combat Evolved only as a Kinect oh, game. Oh god, no. Like, god and no. that would be the no, worst no, 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 ever. No, no, no. Hmm. no there, there's no way they'll do that because it's it's too big of a right, franchise so. not to. But, but uh, it, what I can see this... <laughs> I could see this happening, turning into some sort of like mini game, uh, mini mini game compilation extra that's like on the side, a la Raving Rapids, you know, <laughs> Raving Rapids, and it's you're out no, there. Master Chief, please, <laughs> one on. Master Chief is over there. <laughs> <laughs> Here comes the it's time for the team bag game. How fast? <laughs> <That's right. laughs> yeah, it just turns into something ridiculous like that. So uh, play dress Master Chief. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa, it's so real! Oh man! I feel like I'm in the game. Or, it's Halo 1, so you could have like the grenade baseball throwing contest. <laughs> like, just how many miles can you throw on the plasma grenade? You need to get out your buddies and, and, and uh, up to four people can play at once, and you gotta like look like a big grunt or something, or so some sort of, I don't know, <laughs> the, the, the shadow of it to mold yeah. your body, whatever. It could be pretty hilarious. Yeah, I, uh,. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm, so, I'm so disappointed by that news. Okay. <laughs> That's all the news is, really. Just just a bunch of disappointment. It's going to have Connect. All right, oh, last sorry. story. <laughs> That's what I thought he was saying. Make, too. Yeah. <laughs> That's all the news is. Just a bunch <laughs> of disappointment. disappointment. God, there's nothing good ever coming up. <laughs> well, it's kind of a downer way to look at it. Yep. But it's mostly true. Well, bring me up. Fine. The last story. <laughs> Duke Nukem Forever came out. Yep. Yay! And people were like, oh yeah, Duke Nukem, love Duke Nukem 3D. Well, a lot of people started complaining about Duke Nukem Forever, saying it wasn't as good as 3D. So how about a complete remake of Duke Nukem 3D called Duke Nukem Reloaded? What? It's being uh, completely developed uh, by uh, like a fan studio uh, in, uh, where was it? Somewhere in Scandinavia. But it's not official. It's not an official one, like a complete fan one, but they have not approached Gearbox, and Gearbox said, you guys can do this, this is awesome. So That's Gearbox cool. is like officially endorsing them, the fact they're making this 3D remake using the Unreal Engine 3. Hmm. Yeah. So it's going to be a, a, a non-commercial release, which pretty much means it's going to be a free download, free download for computers hmm. whenever it gets released. I heard about this. I didn't know it was like unofficial official, but uh, yeah. I, I'm really interested to see because I was, I've been getting so pissed. So many reviews have bombed the game and they're like, oh, the graphics are horrible. Oh, da, 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 oh my God, it's just a bunch of cheesy one-liners, da, 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 da. That's fucking Duke Nukem. It's been driving me crazy. It's not some groundbreaking first person shooter. Yeah. It's a fun game that's hilarious. It's a spoof off the 90s action hero. If it entertains you, don't take it too seriously. It's been bugging me. And like, I'm hoping that when this gets re-released, you know, and so people are like, oh, rah, 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 rah. When that comes out, maybe I'm hoping some people will finally make the connection that Duke Nukem Forever is a pretty true sequel. Or if they don't have the same complaints about Reloaded, you know, yeah, I'd love to see that. Kind of hypocrites. Well, oh, it was such a fun game we played it. This is great with the HD graphics, you know, and it's... Oh. Here's the thing. Uh, what you're going to hear when this game comes out, they're going to go, Oh, this is way better than Duke Nukem Forever. Forever. Yeah. This is way better than that. I can't, I can't you know, fuck your box, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. But the thing about it, well, like, just piggybacking on what you said, the game was announced 14 years ago. And, I, and, and in the Slash video, I asked what people were doing 10 years ago for a reason. Yeah. It's like, what were you doing 10 years ago? What were you doing 14 years ago? How old were you yeah. 14 years ago, right? When the game, they didn't change a whole lot. Like, mm. they didn't change a whole lot from the time is, you know, they changed like the beginning and the end, but 
Duke is Duke. You know, that's, yeah. the, that's the whole idea behind Duke is this one-liner guy who's a total machismo, you know, I'm all about me and, and getting banged by chicks and having two <laughs> girls on my knob. You know, like, <laughs> like that, is, that is what Duke is all about. Right. 14 years ago, I was 15. I would have thought that was like, awesome. Exactly. You know? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's exactly it. Like, 14 years ago, everyone's going, <laughs> Duke Nukem's peeing on things. And nowadays, <laughs> Since people are older, like, oh my god, he's peeing on things. Duke Nukem is peeing it, on things. That's disgusting. It's like yeah. you grew up. It's like you grew up and you lost all the all the fun bone in your body, and, and you're like, oh, this is fun bone. Duke. Uh, <laughs> it's like it's it's like you went from drinking a Kool Aid to a wine spritzer with your with your pinky <laughs> out. You know, it's like who the hell are you to you know go back 14 years ago and and it, what, what what's that line from Mr. Deeds where he's like. If I would have saw me when I was yeah, yeah, I would kick my own ass. Exactly. You know? like, it's like the same thing. You would kick your ass if you saw how you are nowadays, and you were this pretentious like reviewer who are who is too afraid of of just having a good time. It's like, man, get over yourself. Really, really. It's a game. Get over yourself. Have some fun. It's fun. So from there all that, go. they're making a new Duke Nukem 3D. <laughs> uh, no, no idea when it's gonna come out, but it's something in the works. Cool. I, I fully endorse that. Yeah. I know, that's Not really that cool they need my too. endorsement or anything, but I'm just saying, I think that's great. And I, you know, it's unfortunate that people are, what it's gonna do is it's gonna open up a new can of worms at Duke Nukem Forever, and people are gonna say that sucks, and Duke Nukem for, Forever, whatever this is called, is gonna be that much better, whatever. Right. But Gearbox is keeping it very classy. Yeah, so. props mm -hmm. to them. Gearbox yep. has been doing a lot of things that's making them, giving me, uh, putting them in high regards for me at least. Yeah, definitely. Like I'm, they've gotten a lot of my respect recently. All right, but that is hard news. Cool. Excellent. Well, good job, Jared. I'm sorry that I, uh, Turned so negative Nancy on those stories. <laughs> on all three of them? Yeah, I, I really did. I really did. Well, the first two were justified, and the third one is just, just a reaction to people's fucktardness. That's, I know, that's wow. kind of, the third one's kind of been bugging me yeah. for a while, so. Okay. I'm, gl I'm glad you, glad you uh, released some of that anger. Yeah. I am, I'm, I'm very, very happy. Feels so much better now. <sighs> yeah. Good. All right, so there you go, okay. So uh, that's hard news. Now, we have something very important to talk about this week in the middle segment, and that is Sonic the Hedgehog. This is important stuff. Yep. It was his birthday last week. Sonic the Hedgehog, one of the greatest gaming mascots in history during the 90s. But not right now. <laughs> 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 it's time to talk about Sonic. And we wanted to go over some memories from Sonic. Uh, this was brought up because... Uh, uh, this, this comes from uh, G1 Demon the Kid, who had suggested it in the uh, Screw Attack forums. Yeah. Under the uh, middle segment suggestion area. And I saw this and I thought, oh, that's Sonic a great talk. idea. So uh, some of the questions that he kind of threw out there was to start off, let's, uh, what are some of our favorite past stages and zones from the entirety of the Sonic the Hedgehog series? Mm. See, Casino Zone, you have to say it. Yeah, yep. uh, I think uh, Casino Zone's up there for everybody. Right. Uh, but you, you gotta, for me, Marble, Marble Zone, which was the like second the second level in, in, in Sonic 1, really stuck out, stuck out for me. Why is that? And I'll tell you why. Because everyone thinks Sonic is all about speed. And if you ever want to see an example of why Sonic is not about speed, you need Love to play Sonic. that yeah. level. That's a, it's a great example. It's mm -hmm. it's all jumping, it's just getting there, you got things swinging back and There's forth. lava and crap. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's very simple and it's not it's not about speed. Now everyone's like, oh, Sonic's not that fast. Well, play that play that level and tell me Sonic's about speed. It's about great platforming, which is what that level is. So. Right. I would say everyone knows like the first stages, you know, the oh, you know, Emerald Hill Zone, uh, Green, Hill Zone. Green Hill Zone, everyone knows those. Uh, the Sonic I played the most was Sonic the Hedgehog 2, mm -hmm. which uh, I actually I didn't really have a Genesis growing up, but my cousins did. So whenever we were there, you know, we'd get on their Genesis and play some Sonic the Hedgehog and crap like that. So for whatever reason, Chemical Plant Zone stuck out in my head more than anything else because, you know, we had dis we had discovered that you know you can the second player can play as Tails, mm -hmm. which uh -huh. is awesome. <laughs> And uh, but it was basically like the first two player cooperative platformer ever. Right. And uh, it was because of Chemical Plant Zone and the boss fight against Robotnik at the end that we discovered Tails is invulnerable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Even if he <laughs> dies, that motherfucker comes right back. Yep. And he, like, so I would play a Sonic just kind of hide in the corner. And either my brother or my cousin would just, you know, suicide launch himself as Tails at Robotnik until he dies. That's great. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Dude, I, uh, what was it? It's probably like, it was, one of, it was the jungle stage. Uh, Sonic 3? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Sonic 3 where you're jumping on all the, uh, you like... The levers? Yeah, jumping on the levers and that. pulling all this stuff down. That added like a whole new aspect. I remember the first time I thought that was really cool. The pulleys, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think for me, um, yeah, definitely Marble Zone. Uh, I played a lot of Sonic 1 and 2. Not so much 3. 3 was, yeah. three was uh, 
a lot of people really enjoy three, and a lot of people like Ben consider three one of the best Sonic games ever. Mm -hmm. um, but it's odd because, as I've never been a big fan of sales figures because I, you know, I, I still think that if you sell four and a half million copies of the game, it's pretty huge. But the sales figures for Sonic one, two, and three they kind of dropped off as the yeah. series went, all, went along. You know, mm -hmm. mostly because Sonic one was sold with the Genesis or whatever. Right. But um, a lot of people really hold three in high regard, and I think it's really, really good. I think it's a great game, uh, but I don't have any memories from it. Mm -hmm. You know, me neither. Yeah, I mean, like I've been playing a lot recently, and I still enjoy it, but I don't really have childhood memories from yeah, it. Exactly. Now, from like an opposite spectrum, not so much like the Genesis games, but some of the more recent ones. I actually really liked Sonic Adventure 2 when actually playing as Sonic or Shadow, but City Escape, for whatever reason, man, that's a great stage. I mean, you start off, you jump out of a helicopter, and you start snowboarding down a, a highway, and then you leap off of that, and you run around some more, and then you're getting chased by a truck. <laughs> Which think sounds about, ridiculous think now about compared what you to the just said games. compared to the old ones, exactly. But you know what? Was, I actually really like that stage. Like, there's a lot of sweet jumps. You had, like, Sonic doing tricks in the air and... Stuff. See, I, I, I'll be honest, man. I lost touch with the Sonic franchise. Like, after 3, it was really for me. I was like, eh. Whatever. Yeah, and people gave Sonic 4 a lot of crap, at least episode 1. Uh, I, I really, I remember when we got them in the office, we were like, this is amazing! And right. people still railed on the game. I, I, I still think Sonic 4 was, was really great. Yeah, so. we had a lot of fun when yeah. 4 came out. But. Phenomenal. On the opposite end of the spectrum, what are some of your least favorite Sonic memories? Sonic R, Sonic R, Sonic, Sonic R. I can, I, I can wow. tell you right now, I know this exact, and I can hear the music in my head. The girl's music, oh god. Yeah, uh, and... When we were doing the best and worst Sonic games, yeah, uh, I remember having to go through and play Sonic R, and it was just like, if you haven't played Sonic R, if you haven't played it, I encourage you, I implore you, please, go play Sonic R, <laughs> and tell me it's not the worst, like one of the worst <laughs> games, just period. It, it's so stinking bad, and the music doesn't match up at all, like, it's so 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 bad. What was the first Sonic game where he started doing all the rail grinding? Uh, I think of Sonic Adventure. I want to guess two, because I don't remember it being in the first adventure. Okay. I didn't play the first adventure very much, but I want to say Sonic Adventure two. That, and I skate, and like I've skated forever, <laughs> and like so I'm all down with the grinding thing. But I, I remember just seeing that, and it was just like the eyebrow went up, and I'm just like, Wait. how the. Did we get mm -hmm. here, man? You gotta like, remember, he was using his bare feet, dude. That's pretty yeah. hardcore. I don't know. I think it's something like maybe some producer watched Tarzan and they were like all talking about him like surfing on trees and stuff and they're like, you know what? Let's have Sonic grind things, you know? I don't know. <laughs> you guys it, ever, it didn't uh, do it for me, man. Did you guys ever get Super Sonic when you were a kid playing the older games? I never did. Neither, I never did. To neither did I. I know uh, I was damn close several times, mostly on Sonic 2, just because the first one was maybe trip balls and my young eyes couldn't handle that kind of visual stimulation. <laughs> but the second one, where you know, you're you know, getting the rings and all that, I got. Mm -hmm. I think I got like maybe five out of seven Chaos Emeralds, but never more. Yeah, it was something that had to be waited till later on. Uh, yeah. As a kid, I never, never was able to accomplish that mighty, mighty task. Okay, I have a question for you guys. Okay. Yes. Because I personally liked it. Sonic Spinball. Yeah. I actually like it too. Yeah. <laughs> it's in the peanut gallery over there. Cause, yeah, because yeah, I hear some people like, oh, folks on Spinball. It was fun. It was a pinball game. It was a pinball game, but like monsters tried to eat it you. It was and a like, pinball game with a goal. Like you had a monster to defeat, you actually had to like unlock areas and actually get to the next room to fight the boss and things like that. Exactly, yeah. That's and cool. Then the tube opened and you could go in and go to the next level and stuff. I had a lot of fun. I love that game. I thought, I think that's when I kind of was like, Really? <laughs> really? You know, I mean, it, it's a pinball game, and that's where you kind of figure, that's where you start seeing video game characters. Like, Mario's in every game ever now mm -hmm. for Nintendo, you know? And, and at first it was cool. Oh, look, Mario's in Punch Out. That's funny, you know? Yeah. Oh, look, Mario's in pinball. He's in pinball uh, in, <laughs> in, in, on the NES, yep. you know? And, uh, you know, it's cute, you know? And you're like, oh, that's adorable. And then you go. He was in Arkanoid for the Game Boy. Yeah, yeah. He was actually <laughs> guiding the little ship, you know? So it's like, at that point, when you see Sonic Spinball, you go, oh. <laughs> but it was the first one, yeah. yeah, so like I, yeah I, I see how it is. But even as a kid, you, you're like, oh, okay, wh why is Sonic yeah. doing that? And then you figure it out. It's a marketing ploy. <laughs> True, but did you guys ever have a Game Gear, by the way? Yes. Yeah. I did. Uh, remember Sonic Chaos? It was Sonic Chaos, right? Uh, no. I, I never played Chaos or Labyrinth. I only played just like the Sonic the Hedgehogs for Game okay. Gear. Yeah, because remember, uh, that was the first game I got with my Game Gear. It was, uh, I almost 100% sure it was Sonic Chaos. 
been a long time. The but, Sonic uh, game on the Game Gear. Yeah, exactly. Okay. The, yeah. the one that was exclusive, and I remember it was so cool because people were like, oh, you got the Sonic game, it's only on the Game Gear? I'm like, yeah, you know. <laughs> it, was, it was pretty awesome. The Game Gear as a, as a whole needs to be an entirely different conversation. And it's just, <laughs> the Game Gear, Beast. the Atari Lynx, yeah. the, game, the Game Boy in general, that, that needs, that's an entirely different conversation for another day. But yeah, I don't know, um, worst memories? Uh, you said you mentioned Sonic. Uh, right. Actually, this is kind of a recent one and kind of breaks my heart because Bioware did it, but Sonic Chronicles for the DS, which is basically the first and Sonic's only RPG game. It's supposed to be like Super Mario RPG, only Sonic the Hedgehog. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, that sounds awesome, but it wasn't very good. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the, like the plot just wasn't there, and like they, you know, forced you to pay, like, you know, do all this weird touchscreen stuff uh, during the combat. Like when an enemy runs away, it doesn't run away. You actually chase after them. So you oh have to like, God. you know, press like Sonic to jump over obstacles and to catch back up, and then continue the fight. And it was just really annoying. Mm. I never beat it. I didn't want to. Yeah. But you still have it? Yeah, I still have it. Well, don't. Just. It's just yeah. there. Yeah. yeah. You just, just walk there. in just and just look at it. And then, uh, any other uh, any other Sonic things that did you want would like to know about? Um. Well, I guess it'd be good now to pimp up the new uh, Sonic trailer from Eddie oh, LeBron. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. We got we got the uh, brand new trailer for the fan film produced by Eddie LeBron over on Screw Zack right now. A lot of people, uh, he is the guy who produced the Mega Man fan film, which uh, garnered over half a million views uh, on Screw Attack alone. So uh, yeah, I mean, that thing was uh, was great. Awesome. If you didn't see the, the original Mega Man fan film, you can still see it on Screw Attack. Um, for those of you on YouTube who have no, no idea what I'm talking about, go check it out. It's about 90 minutes long or whatever. About an hour and a half. It's, it's legit, like a full legit movie. It's legitly the best video pure game video game movie I've ever seen. And uh, and it's all fan produced. Um, out of pocket. He's coming out with with Sonic and guess who's the voice of Sonic? Michael Julia White. White. That's right. The from guy, the cartoons. The guy from the cartoons. All three so. of them. Well, now they got newer ones like Sonic X and stuff, but I don't watch those. Yeah. <laughs> so anyways, uh, go check out the trailer. You can find that in the link below as well. So yeah. I'm looking forward to that. I don't. There, I don't know if there's like a release date on it or not, but uh, you know, it'll definitely be on Screw Attack when the time is right. It's coming. So, yeah. All right. That's Sonic talk. Yeah. Very nice. Okay. Good stuff. Uh, now, let's be entertained. Yes. <laughs> it's time for the Side Scroll News Desk. Hey, the music. Sound like a balloon slowly in the air out. <laughs> As you just kind of squeeze the neck yeah. a little bit. <laughs> All right. Uh, so what's Florida got for us, Craig? Well, actually, we are not going to Florida this what week. What the really? hell? I'm sorry. <laughs> Come on, Florida. Yeah, what's up with you, Florida? I'm sure they're saving up for something good. To uh, be fair, we've had weeks where all three stories are from Florida, so... We're just, uh, yeah, we're... Now uh, we just have well, unrealistic come to expectations. expectations. Yeah. 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 Oh, crap. You remember, remember when I was saying ScrewTech wasn't loading properly? That's and when you were to... supposed to pull up your stories. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I, I had them pulled up, but now I don't. Uh, okay, here we go. Uh, let's go to... I can pull them up right now. The internet. <laughs> what you got for us, internet? All, all, actually, uh, I know two of these stories have to do with technology and internet, so uh, there will be no crazy map spinning down. All right. Um, or will it? You are an IT guy. Yes. Let's, uh, let's go to the internet. Do it, and Jerry. we're there. All right, now there you have you to decide where the internet is, Jerry. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> um, you are an IT guy. One of those techie men, okay. right? Uh, you're an IT guy. You do not have a very good relationship with your boss. Okay. You get canned. What is the next thing you do? Fuck up his computer. <laughs> Why? Why? Why would you do that? Why would you do that? What? what? I'm just saying, don't ever fire me. <laughs> are, are, are you, are you you're the screw tech IT guy here? All right. No. Um, cool. So yeah, this guy. Can you give like a go? Go, go ahead. Can, can you, I'm not. No, no. What are you gonna say? Put a bunch of gay porn on his computer. Interesting. Or porn and send it to his wife. Interesting. You <laughs> send it to his wife. Photoshop his head, head. into bang, porn. Uh, his secretary or something and send it to his wife. Nice. Well, let me just tell you this: the IT guy has been arrested. <laughs> the IT guy has been arrested. Uh, he's a Identity CEO. Theft? No, no, no. The CEO of the company okay. is giving a presentation, a, a PowerPoint presentation to yes. all sorts of board members, <laughs> very esteemed members of the community. They are getting together, and he's like, this is what I've done. This is what I've done. 
this is what I've done. Oh my God, giant gay porn. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, big old porn shows up uh, on uh, on the just on this giant presentation that he's holding in front of all these people. Well, did you know that's illegal? Like that, that like showing people porn is just illegal in general. Oh, really? Yeah, like uh, like walking like hey, hey. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Chris <laughs> walked down the street with a magazine. No, 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 no. <laughs> breaking the law, breaking the law. <laughs> well, it's not so much showing people porn. It's more so the act of uh, sending them a link and it going to some sort of porn that you don't know about. Or so eighty percent of so, the internet is illegal. Yeah, I was gonna say Pretty porn much. trapping. Is that what it is? So, something along those lines. Yeah. So, anyways, this guy's been arrested. Uh, after he, uh, it's funny because he actually had an entire road to being arrested because uh, it didn't start with just the, just the porn on the thing. He, he actually uh, he accessed five employee email accounts just because he could, and he was <laughs> and he was sending emails that other people sent to other people, to the people like let's say I was talking like, talking smack shit, about you uh. right. To, to Chad, Chad would then take that email and forward it to you <laughs> from like my email. That's awesome, oh, man. And it made for like a lot of really awkward moments and such. So, this anyways, awesome. awesome. Shit. <laughs> yeah, this guy. Yeah, so awesome in fact that he's now in jail. So, oh, uh, congratulations. He buddy. went out with a bang. You know, some, in some weird way, that's a pun. Yeah, I didn't actually. But, mean uh, anything, yeah. There anyway. we go. Loosely tied. Yeah. Oh. Anyways, <laughs> so way to go. Don't do that. <laughs> All right. Uh, don't fill next. your boss's computer with porn. Now I don't know what to get you for your birthday. Mm, you can always get what? Chad porn. Okay. What? I don't okay. know. What? I don't. No. What? What? All right, hold on. Now I gotta find this other story. Where is it? <laughs> As I said earlier, got it. Here we go. Is nothing but smooth and concise. Yep. It usually oh. is, but my freaking computer wasn't working earlier, really, and I had to close all my windows. So, all right, let's say Acon. Okay. You guys go to Acon. Yep. You yeah. love yourself some Acon. It's, it's, been, it's, been, it's been a staple of, of your life for the past few years. You bring all Long your friends time. together. You guys are mischievous and you have all sorts of fun. Right. Right? Do you have a Twitter account? Yes. Yep. Would you ever send pictures of you being bad on your Twitter account? Me, no, but I know people who would. Well, these people are fucking dumb because... <laughs> uh, they, okay, so these kids have a Twitter account. They go to a hotel room, oh right? God. They wreck it all the shit. Right. I mean, they they just destroy this hotel room. So what's the what's the natural thing to do? To take take a pictures picture of, of it, it and tweet tweet it to your friend saying, "Look what I'm doing right now <laughs> with you in it." Wait until you're like, "Hey, look at me! I'm breaking this vase." You know, or, or "Hey, look <laughs> at me! Or, uh, look at me! I'm doing this." Whatever. This now is so much fun. Straight up vandalism. Yeah. Did they put their room number? Well, no, because when they got into it, uh, the party goers. Uh, caused about thirteen thousand eight hundred eighty-five dollars in damage. Jesus! According to a criminal complaint, uh, and the total does not include the damage the men allegedly done to the hotel sprinkler system, which is all sorts of screwed up. What so, they do oh my in God. A sprinkler what system? convention was this at? Uh, it wasn't so much a convention; it was just at this hotel room. So, Are you serious? Yeah, they just went. It, it was. Uh, I'm bored. You bored? You want to go fuck up a hotel room? Six suspects yeah, between the age of 16 and 23. Now, I'm going to argue that if you're 23 and you're hanging out with like a 16 year old just in your spare time, I don't know, there's a pretty big disparity there. And, yeah, it's kind of weird. Yeah, it's kind of awkward. But um, so, anyways, uh, they, they uh, the police chief went out and did a little quick search. They're like, okay, who did this? And they looked at the people who were staying in the room, looked for their Twitter accounts, searched them real easy, and sure enough, hey, the. Uh, he says the kids handed the ca- handed the case to him. Does it show their oh. Twitter account in there? Because I kind of want to see. No. Yeah, I want to follow them. <laughs> they have like 13 <laughs> followers. Three days from now, they're gonna have like 4,000. No, yeah. no, no. That actually does not uh, does not include it. So. Uh, well, the thing is, like, how would you even think you're gonna get away with that at all? Because you have to put the room in someone's name, and you have to show a valid ID. So yeah, like, even if one they, person is screwed already. Yeah, even if they didn't tweet it, the hotel's gonna know. And they're gonna yeah. find them and charge them money for it. Yeah. Pretty dumb. Way That's, to go, dummies. Kids are dumb. Really you're weird. dumb. You're dumb. You're so dumb. Yeah. At least do something you're gonna get away with. Stop being dumb. What? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, finally, let's let's have a little bit of fun here. Okay. Uh, what's that guy look like? That guy right there. What the hell? <laughs> I'm uh, assuming there'll be a picture of this on the screen right now. Yeah, uh, that I is, don't want to, but there it is. That is a 55-year-old man in a... How would you describe that, Jared? Pink uh, prostitute wear? I don't know. <laughs> That's a good description. 
Kind of a nightgowny, like... Like, if your wife or your girlfriend wore this for you, you'd probably have a boner. But if a 65-year-old man was wearing it for you, it'd probably be the other way around. It would go inside. So. <laughs> it would retreat. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> all right, so uh, this guy, apparently, uh, he's not doing anything illegal at all. He's just uh, he's a, kind of a cross-dressing guy, but he's not, he's not so much cross-dressing. He's more so doing it for fun, because he travels for business a lot, right? And, oh. and, and he wanted just to have a little bit of fun. And he was like, you know what? I'm just gonna start dressing in women's <laughs> clothes. And you know what? I'm gonna fly in this, and it's gonna be fun, and it's gonna be a little release for me. Business yeah. trips bore me. How can I get my dollies? Yeah. Ah, I've got it! Well, look at that one. What do you think of that? Ah. <laughs> okay. I just pictured him doing, like, some board presentation, <laughs> you know, and, like, no, nobody can see, like, what they're just like. He's like, oh, I dropped my laser pointer, hold on, you know? And like, see, I see him with, like, the full business suit doing the presentation, and at the end, he's like, well, that's enough business. Time for pleasure. <laughs> well, or they can't see it because it's, re it's reflecting off his nylon top. Yeah. It's about, a light uh. is just reflecting off. Anyways, uh, so this guy, he's like a regular old business guy. He. Uh, he travels when he goes to the airport, obviously, and he, he goes to the airport dressed in this very sexy garb. If you were a woman, if you're I would like, not call it sexy. if you're 20 years old and you're a hot chick, then it's sexy. Once again, if you're a 65 year old oh businessman executive, God. it's not. Uh, now you say, how come people don't complain about this on the on the U.S. Airways, which is the uh, flight he he uh, goes on? They well, can. they do. But he's not doing anything wrong. Exactly. He's 100% covered up, so he's not. So they're like supportive of it because <laughs> he's just flying, and he's probably a first class guy. So they, you know, so they're not gonna complain yep. anyways. The very definition of first, first class. First class, exactly. <laughs> Imagine that though, like just all the other first class people, just very, like very just, you know, nice, and then it just like camera pans, and it's just this guy, and, like. <laughs> Like this is gonna get around though. Isn't like his company gonna like shun upon that? Or, like wherever he's going to like do these presentations, are they gonna be like wary of this guy? What if he's the owner. Freedom of speech, man. You can do whatever you want. I guess, this this is America. If they fire him for this, I'm not saying they're gonna fire him, but they, I mean, I don't know. I guess you, you it could, can't be good for business. <laughs> well, nobody knows what it's worth because his name his name is not anywhere in this article. They said he can. His face is right there. Yeah, I know. But People's gonna recognize him. They said that he, they, it's it's ironic because he says he can that people can uh, use his. Uh, uh, take his pictures if it's for personal use, but oh. uh, but, but not for <laughs> not for professional use. It, like it's like if you're on if you're on an iPhone, you're I like know. hey. But it's it's a, it's ironic that as soon as he said that, his his uh, picture and his stuff ends up in the San Francisco Chronicle, which is oddly enough a business, yeah. and uh, which totally defeats the purpose of that. So. Oh my god. So way to go, strange 65 year old business executive wearing women's clothing. That was in terms great. of business, Jared. No one will forget him. Yeah. yeah, it's very true. <laughs> he definitely leaves an impression. Yeah. Awesome. Wow. In Chad's pants. What? What? In Brian's pants. What? Nope. In Ben's pants. Yep. Yep. All right, there you go. <laughs> He's Leave. not even here. All right. Okay. Ben. Okay. So there you go. That is a news desk for this week. Sorry, it took me so long to find those. Find those. Uh, that was a bizarre uh, news desk. Yeah, it was. Had the internet and a uh, sixty-five-year-old business executive in women's clothing. Yeah. Sexy women's clothing, but he's not sexy. <sighs> So let's get on some foreign questions on. before yeah. Craig keeps digging himself a hole. Thank you, Dad. An old man hole. Awesome Aww. Ninja 93 wants to know if Screw Attack would have their own console to compete with PS3, 360, and Wii, what would it be? What would be its name, controller, games, and services? We get to design our own console. I'm, I'm still trying to imagine. <laughs> it's called or, the or, old or, man. Or, or not imagine your old man hole. <laughs> oh god. Oh my gosh. All right. Okay, so uh, console. What would its name be? Uh, the screw box. That'd be that'd be a great sell. <laughs> yeah, that'd be a great sell. Moms, pick up the screw box for your kids. <laughs> yes. Get a lot of internet sales. Yeah, yeah. It'd be a lot of that. Uh, in terms of a controller, um, it would not have any sort of uh, motion functionality. No touch screen. Any at all. No. Yes, yeah, so it would just be a straight up controller. Uh, I would, pr I personally uh, think the uh, PS3 and the uh, 360 controllers are great. Um, so I, I would well, model it. We'd have to it. do something new though. No, it would pretty much be that. <laughs> <laughs> it, it'd, it'd okay, be a hybrid between the SNES controller and the 360 controller. Okay, that sounds perfect. Yeah. It's gonna be a 360 with the screw tech bolt painted on it. <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> 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 um, yeah, I, that's a tough question, and it's it's one of those things that you need to put a little bit more time into. But I think we did. I believe in the past we have made the ultimate console, 
Yeah, we talked about something. Like um, that. Where we essentially just taped all the consoles together. Yeah, oh, that, yes. Yeah. The Super Mega Ultra console. But, I don't know, what about you, Jerry? Uh, the only console I would try to make is just some sort of amazing hybrid that can play anything yeah. from like Nintendo 64 and older. Like one all around controller so I can play Genesis, NES, Super Nintendo. You have all the games built in or something like that. Ooh, it's called me. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> but also make it not legal the most legal thing. Sell it. Well, there's no way that can be legal though. Well, everyone, of course not. Nah, but this is a dream design. console. Oh, okay. All right, I get it. There you go. The console that plays everything plus and does when, everything. Plus, when people emulate it, you know, they're using the, those bullcrap keyboard controls. That's not how you play those games. That's right. Like a legit controller. And then they. Oh, I try some so nuts too, man. I've been on. Uh, a hate raid today. Where <laughs> next question, next question! No, 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 no. No, if you're gonna bitch Don't let about, them know! No, no, no. no. If, <laughs> listen, <laughs> internet, if you're gonna complain about a game, if you're gonna review a game, review it properly. Don't do it on your stupid emulator because you're not because you're not getting the full experience. You got that internet? That's why that's reason number five, Craig dislikes you. <laughs> Your vacation was supposed to let off a lot. I know, right? Ah, <laughs> oh, come back all rested. Let me just fuck you all. Like, <laughs> all right. No. So, Seriously. Orange Our Tuesdays wants to know. Video question, go. Hi, I'm Josh Ryder, or G1, Orange is Our Tuesdays. And I have a question for you, and you two too. Um, I was wondering, what was your favorite McDonald's Happy Meal toy, either as a kid or now? Um, although, I don't know if you. Just, ne never mind. That's my question. Enjoy it. We appreciate your absolute indecisiveness in asking that <laughs> question and your lack of audio syncing, which was a uh, quality as well. We can fix it. No, no, no. It needs to go in raw. Okay. Just like that. Okay. Um, so, favorite Happy Meal toys from McDonald's. Of all um, time. Well, here's the thing. You can go with your personal favorites in that. You know, like you get. I remember the old Mario and they had Mario Three stuff, which was yeah. fun. Uh, but I was, I was always a fan of the pullback cars that you got, just oh, like little Hot huge. Wheels, you know, pullback. I always loved those. Yeah, yeah. Do you guys remember Food Transformers? Yes. It was Holy like the crap. little McDonald's. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it was like little McDonald's things that would transform into I had like robots. the burger and the fries and you like transform yes. into robots. Yes. The worst one was the milkshake because it was like only its head came up, <laughs> like and nothing else. And if you're the kid that got that, you were the dumbest kid. Yep. No one wanted to play with you. <laughs> Holy crap, I had completely forgotten forgot about, about those. Oh. That was actually, when you were talking about that, those were, those were things that I, uh, were, one of those was I was thinking about. Let's see. Both of you guys' eyes, like, lit up, mm -hmm. man. Like, I remember there was, like, the pancake box that, you know, and, like, they were, it's probably really shitty looking back on it, but it was awesome at the time. Anything transforming is awesome. Did you get the Happy Meal for the, for the Happy Meal or the actual toy? Always toy. toy. Always yeah, toy. for sure. Always. Like otherwise, I just get a stupid burger, right, Brian? Yep. That's right. <laughs> All right, what else? So I thought you were about to go off on the internet <laughs> again. Free Transformers, awesome. Jerry, did you have a favorite one before we move on? Uh, I know there's a bunch of video game ones, but I can't remember any of them. F Zero uh, ones were cool. I don't I know, know if it was McDonald's though. Yeah, I know I've recently gotten Pac-Man toys from Wendy's. About mm. that was, oh gosh, maybe two months ago. Yeah, you wanted you had that video all planned out for it. Um, I'll go with food transformers because I do remember the hell out of those. Hold on, I I, I found a list online of the uh, best super uh, best pack. What is it? Best Happy Meal toys. Yeah. Uh, it's on ForeverGeek.com. Uh, some of the list includes. Uh, That's uh, where I got those Batman toys. Superhero mobiles, uh, Batman video game characters. Uh, Oh, these are pretty recent. Star Wars. Oh, Turtles. Ninja Turtles. Turtles. That's pretty cool. Super Looney Tunes. Or Spider-Man. Astro Boy. Okay, that's kind of a weak list. So, yeah, uh, <laughs> this weak list. So, so, you just uh, gave a shout out and so, everything. So don't go to ForeverGeek.com. Ouch. No, 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 no it's uh, ForeverGeek.com and uh, Top 10 McDonald's Happy Meals. Well, next up, we have another video question. This time from Sky Ace 156601 Seriously, emulators? Put the fucking mouse it. out of the recorder. It's ridiculous. Hey, StuartTech.com, this is G1, Sky one five six six zero one, and my question is that um, recently on Digital Forecast, uh, High School Ben says that if the uh, Star Fox 3DS doesn't sell so well, they're going to discontinue the franchise. And I, me personally, I played a lot of Star Fox growing up on my N64, and I love Star Fox Adventure for my game piece. So I'm just wondering, what are you guys' thoughts on everything the Star Fox franchise again if it doesn't sell well? Alright, thanks for listening, I'll catch you guys on the side scrollers. I'm going to call shenanigans. 
first off on, uh, I think it was Shigeru Miyamoto who said it. Mm -hmm. Because they're never going to kill off one of their franchises like that. I mean, this is the same guy who said, if Zelda Skyward Sword is not the best Zelda ever, we'll never make another Zelda game ever again. Bull crap! You're going to continue to make Zelda games no matter like how good it is. It's, it's one of your cheap franchises. Yeah, but I can see it with Star Fox. However, Star Fox hasn't been very good recently. Right. Here's the thing. I think I am totally fine with him making a statement like that. What I'm not fine with a statement like that being made is about a freaking remake of a game that is, once again, right, it's not a new game. 14 years old. So it's like, so this game has been around for a long time. People have already played it. So putting all of your stock into a game that people have already played, hoping that it sells well, I don't know. That's if, exactly if, my opinion. Mark. If it was a new game, and they're like, this that would is, make this more is, sense. Yeah, it, right. if it's like this is a new new Star Fox, we developed it out, and it's just gonna be brand new. But if you don't buy it, this is it. Yeah, like this is the new direction we want to take Star Fox. Mm -hmm. You know, if you like it and everybody likes the game, we'll buy it. You know, we'll continue going in this direction. If you don't like it, then you know what? We had a good run. Mm -hmm. Right. But I agree. It's totally just. Did you like it on 64? How much did you love it? Like, show us what you used to love so much that we might continue. You know, I don't know. Buy the game again. The yeah. last Star Fox game they did was Star Fox Command for the DS, so that was not very good. Mm, no. Um, but the Star Fox Assault on the GameCube, which wasn't even developed by Nintendo, Namco did it. And it was okay. Like, they had, like, probably too much on-foot stuff and not enough R-wing se sections. But it wasn't terrible by any means. Am I the only one who just wants Star Fox to be flying a damn plane? Yes, no, 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 and that's the thing. I haven't played it, and I've heard a lot of people like the adventure games and stuff like that, but for me, I, I never had an interest because I'm just like, that's not Star Fox. It's not like, how, you're supposed not how to Star Fox started, yeah. shooting crap, like, yeah. I don't know. That, that, it's essentially a, a plane shooting game. Yeah, it doesn't need space. to return to form. Yeah. Not from a remake, but an actual game. Exactly. Yeah. So, All right, what we'll else? see. Next up, Aussie Dragoon wants to know, if you could pick one 80s or 90s cartoon to get a remake relaunch video game, like War for Cybertron, which would you choose and why? Thundercats. Oh. Good answer. Good answer. Good answer. Thundercats. Damn. Whoa. <laughs> Absolutely. Can you imagine Thunder. how fucking cool that would be? Yeah. Lino out there with Making a beat em up, be a four player co op, you all choose different Thundercats. It would be really cool as a beat em up, but the problem is it wouldn't do that. It would be like 3D and then like, I know. it would be three dimensional and you'd be walking around and be like, quick, Lionel needs to know where to go. Use Eyes of Thundera, you know? And like, <laughs> Yeah, why was that never made? Why was, Dude, a, why was a beat em up with Thundercats never made? Seriously. That's a great question. Like, that's so cool. There's a, there's a full supply of, they had limitless supply of characters on that show that, that could have been four players. So we could play as Wily Kit and Cat together. That would be no, so that would cool. Suck. You, you, <laughs> you model that after uh, after The Simpsons or Turtles or right. hell, if you want to go today, you can model it after something like uh, Scott Pilgrim. Mm -hmm. You know, I, that would be amazing. I want to play as Snarf. No, yeah. Snarf would be like that guy you have to find for the checkpoint. To play. Yeah, yeah, you can do a Snarf checkpoint <laughs> or move, move ahead. It would do yeah. with his paw or with his tail or something like that. And that's yeah. all he'll ever be. What about you guys? Uh, I know I took the best answer. Yeah, but. you did. Pretty much. Captain and the video game. That'd be really bizarre, but. It'll never be made. But awesome. <laughs> what if, what if you, you get to play, okay. Now not actually playing as the characters in the show, but I just like the idea of you playing a kid and you go through the world of Mega Man, Castlevania, Punch-Out, you know, all that stuff. Captain, what, what if they make a game called Captain Game Master? <laughs> yeah, <there you laughs> it's, go. It's, it's obviously Captain N. Yeah. The guy's name is like, Devin. You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Instead but, of Kevin. Yeah. Exactly. Awesome. All right. Jared. What else? Oh. Uh, I can't think of a legitimate answer. Someone's going to fall back on Reboot again. <laughs> Which, they had a game on PlayStation 1. Right. I never played it. I don't even know if it was officially released in the United States, but... Man, Reboot. Okay. Yeah, that's all Jared I got. Jared loves him some Reboot, man. That's been coming up. How else? Well... That's it for forum questions okay. right now, but we have two people who met up to the Tiger really? Handheld Birthday Challenge. Huzzah! So first up, we have Dare Dev, and he's holding a Street Fighter II Tiger Handheld, which is exactly the <laughs> one I was talking about last week. You're you see right. Yep. on there, he's like, mm. <laughs> That's great. Yep. And then we have Lint Cleeswood <laughs> holding up a very suspicious looking Tiger Handheld that seems to be a 3DS with Tiger taped to it. <laughs> Excellent job. But props for trying. Good improvisation. Tiger Handheld looks way cooler than mine. Yeah. Right. And uh, that was it. That was the only people who met up to the challenge. Well, congrats on uh, doing that, and all you on the bottom. Congrats on existing. Yep. Your goal for next week. Oh boy. <laughs> like, if it is your birthday, 
You need to dress up like Lionel from the Thundercats. <laughs> Complete with claw. What the hell, dude? With claw. Oh, give him a break on the claw. They're already gonna Complete have to make their claw. hair up and be in like a leotard. You want to have like, like the blue thing with like their abs showing yeah. and all that? How the hell are they gonna pull this off? Just dress up like Lionel. I don't really care. Oh my God. Just make it happen. If you want your birthday on Saturday. I think these are really, really please, great ideas. Please, someone do it. Please. <laughs> all right, look. Okay, we'll brawn it a little bit. Okay, you, did, like you, you just have to dress up as a Thundercat, all right? But extra bonus points for Lionel. Dude, you're gonna see so many Mumras, they're just gonna get toilet paper and throw a red coat well, on. Well, now that you threw that out, well, just say it's a Thundercat, not a villain from Thundercats. All right. Same. Bonus point for ladies who dress up as Chitar. <laughs> all right. Ladies over the age of 18. Dress up as All right, there you go. So, uh, great job, everybody. I, uh, super great to be back. I'm sorry that I was in such a foul mood during some of those things, but uh, okay. I stand by that. That's okay. We're going to finish this up, and you're going to go take a nap. <laughs> I'm getting old at my age. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's for my nap. noon, <laughs> God damn it! W one day, I'm just going to like be in the middle of a story and just go... <laughs> and just, <laughs> just pass out. All right. There you go. That is Sash Goals for this week. Man, oh man, was it great. Once again, I implore you, go back and watch the great content this past week on, uh, on Screw Attack. So much good stuff and uh, so much good stuff to come. And if you haven't watched my uh, Zelda VGR, uh, you're probably gonna hate it. And if you haven't watched uh, Jared's VGR, you're probably gonna love it. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just being honest. So, all uh, right. All right, there you go. That is uh, Side Tools this week. We'll see you guys next week. I'm Stuttering Craig. I'm Chad. And I'm Professional Jared. For Side Schoolers, at ScrewAttack.com.